Salmon River Chinook runs returned with a vengeance to the Lemhi River this year. More than 750 fish returned to their birth waters to spawn a new generation. Ranchers who raised cattle along the banks of the Lemhi River were excited to see the fish come back. They'd been partners working with the Idaho Department of Fish and Game, the Governor's Office of Species Conservation, and a host of other agencies to improve fish habitat for Chinook salmon, steelhead, and resident fish. It seemed like a perfect time to host a tour of recent fish improvement projects in the Lemhi Valley. The tour was co-sponsored by the Idaho Cattle Association, the Idaho Rangeland Resource Commission, and the Governor's Office of Species Conservation. Lemhi ranchers have been working on a multitude of projects to improve fish habitat since Snake River salmon were protected under the Endangered Species Act in the early 1990s. Idaho Fish and Game officials are pleased with the results so far. We're making some really good uh, progress in the last 20 years. Boy, we're, I think, leaps and bounds where we thought we'd be. And we couldn't do it without the landowners. We couldn't do it without the irrigators. So almost all of this spawning habitat in the Lemhi, specifically for Chinook salmon, and also to some degree, steelhead is all on private property. Important thing I think we would like to have people understand is ranchers, property owners here, are equally or more so concerned about all species than anyone. And I think the results that we're getting here show that we're getting that done. Restoring water flows and fish passage into the side streams in the Lemhi River watershed is one of the high priorities for improving fish runs. In the Lemhi, for example, but we have 10 or 15 tributaries we're actively working in to reconnect for fisheries benefit, and Bohannon Creek is a perfect example of that. This is the 4,000 acres, mostly on Bohannon Creek. Nikos Monayos, the owner of the Eagle Valley Ranch, has conserved water on Bohannon Creek to benefit steelhead and resident fish. They converted an open irrigation ditch to a buried pipeline, doubling the amount of water in the creek. The project also saved water for irrigating hay crops. There's what, over 11,000 feet of pipe uh, buried in the ground, and in the process, uh, we also eliminated two uh, diversions on Bohannon Creek and we screened uh, two other diversions for the fish. The bottom line is that um, this was a very significant project that we did with the help of the Idaho Department of Fish and Game uh, that has had a significant impact on the amount of water that stays in Bohannon Creek. The Bonneville Power Administration provided cost share funds for the pipeline project through the Idaho Fish Accord. In the last uh, two or three years, uh, we have seen very tangible evidence that all these efforts have uh, been successful. And I believe that this year, uh, there were more than uh, 35 counted reds, which are spawning grounds for steelhead trout on the lower part of Bohannon Creek. Mona Yost runs a cow-calf operation with Black Angus cattle. Their ranch covers 6,000 acres of deeded ground. Eagle Valley Ranch also donated a 5,000-acre conservation easement to the Lemhi Regional Land Trust to preserve the ranch, open space, and scenic views. Yeah, it was the first easement for the land trust, and it was incredibly significant because it's the size of a watershed. So it was an incredible gift, really, to the public. We're very committed uh, to uh, work as private landowners for preserving both the cattle and agricultural nature of the valley, which is very important because it provides good jobs for people and keeps the economy going, and at the same time do projects that are beneficial to wildlife and, and fish. The Monoyos family also is donating an 800-acre conservation easement to the Lemhi Regional Land Trust along two and a half miles of the Lemhi River. Idaho Fish and Game plans a large fish restoration project in that area. And we hope that the project that we are uh, planning to do on the Lemhi River will allow the Lemhi River to form some uh, side channels, allow the water to slow down, 
and create gravel banks and other places where Chinook salmon and other fish can spawn or rear their young. At the next stop, the group visited a project that restored water to Big Timber Creek. Rancher Merrill Beeler explains. This is Big Timber Creek right here. And for over a hundred and over a hundred years, maybe a hundred and fifty years, there was no water in Timber Creek at this time of year. What we did as ranchers, we wanted to look at some way to reconnect these tributaries to the main stem of the Lemhi River. What if we release this water and let it run to the main stem of the Lemhi River, and then we would pump water from the main stem of the Lemhi River back to our fields? Through the Idaho Water Resources Water Transaction Program, the ranchers moved their point of diversion from Big Timber Creek to the Lemhi River while retaining their full water rates. One of the really interesting things is you would think that having a creek disconnected from the main stem of the Lemhi, all that genetic material would kind of be lost. But the very first year that we reconnected it, they had done some pit tagging of fish in uh, Big Timber Creek. And one of those fish moved out of Big Timber Creek down the Lem High and ping through every pit ray station clear to the Pacific Ocean. And so I think that was a great win, not only for ranching, but for our, our environment. Steelhead also spawned in Big Timber Creek for the first time. Well, you know, I think that's one of those things that just kind of makes you smile inside uh, because that's, that's important. I think that's part of who we are in agriculture. We just like to see things work. And that's part of this whole landscape, you know. If we lose part of this, we lose the whole of it. A 2,350-acre conservation easement purchased by the BPA and managed by the Nature Conservancy also assists in bringing Big Timber Creek and other key tributaries back to life. Spawning areas for salmon has expanded by at least threefold because of the Creek Reconnect projects, Beeler says. He credits a long list of project partners for helping make it possible. Working together, we've made some really nice things happen. A key cornerstone of the fish habitat work along the Lemhi River are the many fish screens that prevent fish from swimming into irrigation diversions. It's a big program. We have over 100 fish screens in the Lemhi Basin. Fish come downstream, hit these what they're called rotary drum screens. They're paddle wheel driven to clean. They rotate with the flow and take debris into the ditch system to keep it clean so water continually goes through the screen itself. There's a submerged bypass pipe, PVC pipe, that's at the corner at the end of the screen and it takes it back to the river. All told, Idaho Fish and Game has installed 270 fish screens in the entire Upper Salmon Basin. Fish and Game receives about $1 million a year from the BPA to maintain the program. Murphy said during the peak of the outmigration, there could be 500 juvenile fish that go through one fish screen in one night. Most of the Chinook salmon spawn in the main stem Lemhi River, and that means they're spawning next to private ranch properties along the way. Ranchers have installed riparian fencing along the river to protect spawning beds from cattle, and federal grazing permits allow ranchers to graze livestock on Bureau of Land Management and Forest Service lands when the fish are spawning. Carl Lufkin explains. On this ranch, we have, uh, there's about seven miles of the Lemhi River, and Big Springs Creek is right behind me here. We have major spawning of rainbow reds on Big Springs, and Chinook salmon on the main stem of the Lemhi. Lufkin raises about 2,000 head of cattle on the ranch. Grazing the cattle on federal lands in summer and fall leave the private land meadows free for fish and wildlife to thrive. In these bottoms you see behind you here, these are wet meadows that are for, we, we only graze partially in the winter to keep the cattle away from this habitat right here. The cattle are here in the winter, the ground's frozen, soil's stable. Impact here on these waterways is very little. So BLM, forest, and state are critical partners in managing this resource. 
Linda Price of the BLM agrees. And so in order to reduce the pressure of grazing on the riparian areas, we really need to work together. Forest service are the higher elevations, BLM is the middle elevations, and then we get down on the private land or the lower elevations. And so if we can keep the cattle moving through those three different elevations at different times of the year, we have the optimum use. I've been around the BLM for 25 years, and I have not seen anywhere else the level of cooperation and working together that we have in this area. Everybody comes to the table. Everybody comes to the table willing to work and willing to talk and willing to see what needs to be done to take care of the resources. And it, it's pretty phenomenal in this area. Well, I think it's just people here, a lot of them are local family operations, and they just feel like it's the right thing to do. Another key is that the ranchers try to stay ahead of the curve and make sure the economic side of their operations are sound so they can afford to voluntarily tweak things to benefit fish. Yeah, you know, we really do want to take care of it and stay in business at the same time, but I think they go hand in hand. Agriculture is the backbone of the economy here. Since the early 1990s, the Upper Salmon Basin Watershed Project has installed 265 fish screens, 50 miles of riparian fencing, completed over 30 fish habitat access projects, more than 150 irrigation efficiency projects, and established minimum stream flows to improve fish passage.